Listen, I'll prove it. The stars at night are big and bright. Big in the heart of Texas. Let's get into it. One, two, three. Hello, hello, and welcome to my whiskey den, your favorite public access whiskey review show where craft whiskey is king. And that is definitely what's going on tonight. We have our big ass Texas stream. We're going to be knocking out eight reviews. We wanted to get through them, and we are lucky enough at this very moment to have Josh with us from Ranger Creek to help us talk about their stuff. So I want to thank you, Josh, for coming on. It was la it was last second, and are we ever going to turn down a distiller on this channel? The answer is no. We will <laughs> no. not do that. So well, maybe one or two. Okay, there's <laughs> there's two. There's two I can think of that would be a no, but that's it. The rest of them are okay. Um, so everyone in the chat, I see Emily's here, Wheels, Spencer, uh, Renita. Yes, I got your name right, but you can call me. <laughs> you can call you can call me whatever you want this week. That's perfectly fine. Um, so thank you guys for showing up, whoever got here on time. We appreciate it. Everyone else coming in, we'll see you in a second. Um, so when we were talking text, when we start talking Texas today, and we were talking Ranger Creek, I think we should probably start out with the 44 Rye. Now, this is, I haven't had this one, and it is pretty exciting. But before I go any further, because I know Renita Rivas has helped us out with this, I have to thank the benefactor for some of the whiskeys tonight. So thank you very much for doing it and getting us some of these. We are, uh, well, the rim fire got destroyed. Just gone. It's not even there anymore. <laughs> There's just, just, just enough to do the show tonight. So, but let's talk about the 44 rye. What goes into all this, into the 44 rye, Josh? Okay, so the 44 rye is actually composed of just one grain, and that is 100% malted rye. Uh, we use percent malted Danko rye. It's actually grown in Canada. Uh, the reason why we went with rye in Canada because at the time, 10 years ago, roughly, um, there wasn't a whole lot of choices for rye. There's a lot of different tech grains being grown nowadays. Uh, but at the time, there wasn't a whole lot available. And we tried it out. Wonderful tasting. You may get a little bit of like apple fruit, spice, uh, cinnamon, uh, a few drops of water. You may get a little bit of mint out of there. Um, but I've tried some other, a lot of people ask me all the time, why don't you use Texas grown rye? You know, there's kind of available out there. It's, I've tried some of the strains and they're excellent, but uh, it just changes the flavor of the whiskey completely after using that single variety of rye. <laughs> uh, but it's quite interesting on the story about that. But uh, also another point about the 44 is the fact that we do not use brand new charred oak barrels. Uh, so it is technically a whiskey made from rye mash. Um, it, focus, it gives the opportunity to focus on the rye characteristics of the grain itself instead of having a bunch of influence from the barrel coming forward. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and we dig that because we've had a couple other distilleries do similar stuff or be more grain forward rather than barrel forward. And I've got to say, I find it's subtle, it's more subtle complexity but there is some unique depth that is lost sometimes once you start going with some of the, the heavier chars and stuff like that. So um, I think it's I think it's really, really sweet. And before we go any further, we're going to sniff this. Where are you guys located? We are in San Antonio, Texas, um, kind of central kind of area of Texas. If you've never really been to Texas, um, we're in an industrial complex. So, you know, you think of Texas and a lot of land and everything. A lot of distilleries are, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, but we're in the middle of town actually. So. Oh, that's sweet. I dig, I dig that. I, I know I've looked it up before because my, my mother-in-law moved out there. So there, I might've been planning a trip, right. um, <laughs> trip out there, but it is nice to have that in a distillery, uh, a distillery to be in the city where you can actually go to it and I don't know, get an Uber home and it's not, you know, an hour drive in Texas. That's awesome. <laughs> thing that we do we make beer as well we are actually mm -hmm. uh, ranger creek brewing and distilling and we were the first in texas to do both um so we coined the name kind of brew distillery here in texas um they changed the law shortly after <laughs> but we have to have two separate entities and a uh, wall separating the steel 
we were grandfathered in, so all the equipment's there. We're under nice. Good. I, uh, that would have been one of those things where it would have come up on our bullshit laws in, in a different yeah. episode had that not been okay. I'm like, and remember how Josh got screwed over. <laughs> so how, how will that, how will the grandfathering work if you guys make any changes or if you make, like if you were to change your footprint, would it totally kill you out of, out of being grandfathered in or? Um, that's a good question. Cause um, in the past, you know, when we've talked about um, expanding and such, how are we going to work that out? Um, I believe that, the owners were talking about the lawyers just to uh, verify, but uh, I'm not 100 percent positive. That's cool. Okay, Mike or Ben, what are you guys getting on the nose on this one? I, man, I get caramel covered green apple, big time, mm -hmm. and I do get that little, like a little bit of mint, and I get just a hint of like molasses cookie. Just a thin one, like the pastry, but like mm -hmm. not as heavy as some of the other ones we've had recently. See, I think on the nose, this is like a rye right up your alley, Pat. This is. Th yeah. This, there, there's no licorice. No black licorice. <laughs> that is fantastic. I just, I, I have issues with that. And uh, they're still drinkable. It just changes. It. Yeah, I have my own opinion. That's fair. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah that I use for the 44 I have noticed compared to using other single varieties that it is a little bit softer than some other rice too and mm -hmm. I typically get a little bit more fruitiness mm -hmm. oh you guys are right yep. now I'm, I'm mad I didn't have this before <laughs> oh green apple sweet honey um but it's not overly oh. sweet altogether mm. and it has a really nice fade at the end um Wow. Okay. Now, now, yeah, I am upset. I didn't crack this. That's the problem with having all these samples is you don't get to everything appropriately. And this is when I would have, I probably already would have had gone by now. <laughs> so you can get to no, this appropriately. Yeah. That's why this ranks in my top uh, rise that I've had in the last year, because it's, there's a sweetness to it, but there's just so much, uh, there's some great spice. Uh, I get a nice, there's something about a, a, a dry hay note to it that yes. I actually like that kind of works right along with this molasses cookie note that you get in there. And, uh, there's just a lot of, a lot of different flavors at play, but everything's kind of balanced together really well. And it's, it shows its youthfulness and I love how mash forward it is. And that's, that's yeah. just what's do, I think do so you, great about it. Do you guys add any water to this towards the end, towards the finishing yeah. process of it? Yes. This is, Excuse me. No, you're all good. 94 proof. So um, entry proof is uh, 118. Actually, I think those batches were still at 125 at the time. Okay. So um, you do, do – it seems – I was going to – I don't know what technique you use, Elevage or anything else with adding it in. It do. does seem very similar to that because I've been picking up that more and more lately about the fluidity of flavors when you use that. Um you get a nice depth of it, but everything is so married together that it mm. it's starting to become like a hallmark when I'm starting to taste some of these. And I was getting part of that in here as well, too. Yeah, I've just recently started doing that in the last few years. Um, and, you know, as you get more and more barrel, it becomes harder to constantly at least check them all the time. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of gives me an excuse to go to the so. <laughs> It's, it's always nice to get out and try <laughs> to try some of this yeah. stuff. I may regret this because we've got what eight, yeah. eight or ten of these on the schedule, but I just had to pour some more. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could just I could sit here happy the rest of the night with a glass of this. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I I do really like this rye. So what what kind of uh, what kind of cocktails do you recommend oh. for your rye? Oh, with the rye, oh gosh, I love it in old fashioned, uh, especially, you know, as with some of the older batches, especially uh, that were starting to come out with single barrels and stuff, it makes it excellent old fashioned. Um, mm. I'm a traditional kind of guy, you know, I stick with old, uh, old fashions, Manhattans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Speaking of older, uh, you guys have these special uh, decanters mm -hmm. that you've come out with. You want to tell us a little bit about those? Yes, they are extremely limited and pick up at distillery only, unfortunately. <laughs> we had a rimfire and a rye. The uh, rye 
barrels that I chose were a four and five years of age. Oh. Uh, um, the five-year-old barrel, 25-gallon barrel, had 11 gallons left in it. So I had lost it. Wow. Uh, that, that's so, vicious. <laughs> yeah. At least it had cast strength overall proof was uh, 130.1. So. Wow. Mm. Mm. You definitely feel those sweet apples up front. And I need a little bit mm -hmm. more batch, a little bit more the, uh, the red apple instead of the green. Mm -hmm. and mm. Batch a little bit. And you get that, that cinnamon, herbal, spice, and you get a bit of a sweet orange on the back end. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, there's like a little eucalyptus in this, just a titch when that spice kicks up. I'm not going to say it kicks up. It just kind of rises up. It's not like it really gets, it's not a feisty one. Um, yeah, it kind of rolls well, and it fades off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And that's uh, what John was saying is that uh, Ranger Creek Rye, they used, you guys used in the Alliance release. You guys left at 129, but obviously it drinks way smoother than that, which is, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Wow. God, mm. the nose is gorgeous on this thing. It is. <laughs> All right. Now, no matter how much I love that one, like Mike said, I don't want to get stuck finishing off that sample and move on. I've, I, when, when we're doing eight or ten, we gotta we got to keep them short at least a little <laughs> bit. I've, I've learned from streams before that if you start pouring them like you normally do, it adds up. And that last review might not be quality. <laughs> <laughs> might be fun. Might not be quality. Huh? <laughs> mm, so let's take a spin over Ooh. to the Ranger Creek Rimfire. Um, mm. Now, like I was saying, this bottle saw a lot of love on Friday night. I had to take it away from my friends because they tried to they tried to bottle kill it all in one night on me. So I had to steal it. So which is awesome because those of you out there know that. My friends on Friday night are ridiculously varied. Some only like Isla, some only like Rye, some only like Irish. Everyone like this. So I, I think that's a, a pretty good statement in that realm. Can you tell us what went into this one? Okay, so the Rimfire at 86 proof, it's a single malt uh, style whiskey. Um, about 30% of the base malt is hand smoked with mesquite. We took a container. Loaded a, loaded a barbecue pit onto the back, put racks and screens in there, just lay out the mall and hand smoke it, which gives us the opportunity to smoke levels, different types of smoke. It also has a little bit of chocolate mall, a little bit of darker. Roast. You may get a little bit of that like chocolatiness mid palate, a little bit of roasted characteristic. I think that works really mm -hmm. well with the smoke. Um, it transforms and really brings out that roasted character a lot. They get honeyed kind of the toasted notes up on the front end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I this uh, the nose on this I really enjoy, and unlike some other mesquite smoked whiskeys that we've tried, this is not overpowering in, in my mind, especially on the nose. I was going to say, and on the palate, it kind of works. It fits its way in there, but it doesn't try to dominate the show so much. Because um, on the nose, I get a, ni a nice chocolate note, a little honey apple again. And like the smoke is just like hinted, like in the background, kind of like wisping around, almost. Yeah. Definitely more at the bottom of the glass than at the top. Our owners didn't aren't really into really heavy smoked whiskeys, but they wanted something smoked with mesquite because the Texas thing, you know. And um, it's been fun. We've even done a lot of experiments with it. I have a, a heavy smoked version of it. Oh. Smoked the grain for 16 hours. Um, nice. Yeah, we have a called a whiskey club. For quarterly, we release two new products in house only. Every quarter, a whiskey and a non whiskey. Because uh, no. in our tasting room, everything's got to be made in house. So if we want to make cool, interesting cocktails, or want to make like a sazerac, we got to make absinthe. So we make absinthe. Mm. <laughs> nice. That is nice. Or kinds of stuff. Yeah. And, and I know we got a lot of Texas people in the chat, so keep that in mind about getting over to pick up some of those yeah. bottles for yourself and, and for us. Just yeah. a few. <laughs> Just a few. Uh, Texas Tempranillo wine barrels. You can see it's very, very red. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Nice, uh, man. Brings out a whole lot more buried kind of cherry yeah. oats mixing with that chocolatiness. 
especially compared to the original. Where I was going to say that really does pick up a lot of a lot of nice color out of it. And that was the older batch of Rimfire's uh, finish. Nice, nice. All right, here. A lot of experimentations with whiskeys. Um, probably one of my favorite recently has been um, the raw finish in a hard apple cider barrel. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And some people, what I've noticed is people either love it or hate it because it, it's a little bit sweeter on the front end from those apples. Uh, but you get some of that kind of like apple funk going on in it. It's, it's awesome. That no, sounds that's amazing. Sweet. Uh, um, Nathan, Nathan yep. in the chat here brought up the white port finish. I've heard uh, Renita's told me about this one before. It sounded amazing. I, I have never heard of anybody else doing a white port finish with the whiskey. Mm -hmm. They, why I chose white port. Um, yeah. A lot of people kept on asking for a port barrel finish. Like, eh, there's just there's so many of them out there. I kind of felt like I <laughs> overdone. And there was a winery not too far from us that were that was white port at the time. Oh, did, oh man, this is awesome. And <laughs> need more barrels. And <laughs> a winery with white port barrels. So I oh. have ideas out there that for substitutes for white port that might work but uh hmm. I'm still still playing with it a bit but it definitely added a bit of nuttiness uh kind of the creme brulee uh, a lot of vanillins you know kind of characteristics okay all right all right nice. mike ben what what are you guys getting on the nose and then to the taste on this i just want to make sure we're we're, we're giving it its proper due you're you're pretty much spot on pat i think uh what I love about it is you've got the mesquite smoke, but still the grain, the mash is what's on top. It's what's present. It's what's forward. It doesn't cover it up. You know, you're not trying to dig to find it through the smoke. The smoke is more of like this little undercurrent that's there. That's kind of a, I don't call it foundation, but it's just, it's there more under the surface a little bit. And so it, it's adding nuance to it, but and just enhancing what the grain and the mash yeah. is already doing there. And that's, I get first thing I get hit on the nose is a, a toasted banana bread, and then I get I get mangoes and other fruit. I was gonna say I got like a little bit of citrus on the front end of it. Yeah, that was yeah, a, I, get, I like it when you said mango because it's got like a little bit earthier flavor. I get a little bit of mango and papaya on the uh, on the palate, kind of about mid palate, and it's just it's sprinkled with like a little bit of cinnamon and allspice to it, and honey, and it's just amazing. Mm. Yeah, I lo I like how your spice just flows up about two thirds of the way through. In both of these, it's like, whew, and then it's like, oh, and then wow. the kind of, it kind of like let, it doesn't overly. This sticks around a lot more, but it it doesn't leave you. It just leaves like a nice medium flavor, just sticking. I mean, it's still here now. It's been like a minute or so since I had my last drink, and it's sticking around really nicely. It's just not overpowering. It's just nice flavor staying in there. I get chocolate and almonds on the finish. Yeah. Came down a little bit on it too is that that spice on the back end. I mean, a little bit was from, from some of the mesquite that I was using. Mm. I get you mentioned the chocolate. I get it's a I get a dry chocolate. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yeah. I get honey and then lemon mm. picks up for like a second and fades away. And then mm. then the spice starts to come in. Yeah. Yeah, mine's been well loved as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same here. I've I've gotten where I'm I'm nursing it because it's almost gone. But that's it's just yeah, time to buy here. a new bottle. <laughs> I, I have I have one backup of the of Rim Fire. So mm. no, it's really good. I enjoy that. Very. In, this is probably the most interesting whiskey to see transform over time, in my opinion. Mm. The the five-year age that we released a single barrel for the anniversary and the decant, uh, it, that chocolate almost into the chocolate towards the back end. Um, it's like just it's so creamy, especially mm. with uh, just more time to develop with all the sugars and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah. And now, like after it's faded away, and now I'm getting like a little brown sugar and barrel no roll over everything at the after everything's gone. This, this is, I really enjoy, obviously I really enjoy this one, but I was surprised how universal it is. 
Like yeah. I'm serious. Like my friends are. It's sometimes it can be a dick. Like you might just buy an aisle of whiskey because you don't want to share it with everyone. Like that night. Like because some of them don't appreciate it. Like maybe you're that asshole that night. But this, <laughs> like, you, this one everyone loves. So this is something you can definitely pick up. And I, I don't know. That doesn't happen very often where there's universal appeal on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. So you can put that on your labels. Yeah. yeah. Ranger, Ranger Creek. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's mm. really good. I enjoy both of these quite a bit. It, I think if you if you're if you happen to be a big Irish whiskey fan and you've never had Ranger Creek, that rim fire is going to be right up your alley. Uh, even with the smoke, it, it's it it harkens to me notes similar to some some good Irish whiskeys, and that's I, I think if you like Irish, that's going to be a great one to to try out for you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That this was fantastic. Uh, I'm I'm really happy with both of these whiskeys. I'm intrigued to see what else you have, but like we were talking earlier today, uh, we're going to work. We're going to see if we can get Josh to come on an evening with uh, in a couple of weeks coming up in the future here where we'll get more in depth and we'll talk more about just your guys' distillery um, because it's like I, we're 20 minutes in and I could easily spend the next 40 minutes talking about stuff, but then it screws yeah. over what the stream was about and yeah. I'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe um, uh, some spe a few special models. Up there to you. Well, we'll we'll take a look that, at that. That would be awesome. That right, would yeah. be amazing, and, and that would that would be fantastic. Um, but I we thank you for coming on, Josh. And we're sorry to have to let you go. We'd love to have you stay all night. Um, yeah. But we we want to have you back on. We want to tell more people about your story and, and get everything and get everyone involved with that. Yeah. Um, and looks like everyone else is saying hi in the chat as well too. So we we'll talk to you later. But we'll have you back on in a couple of weeks. We'll let everyone know on social media when to come back and learn even more about this. And then yeah. if I do get a chance to sneak down there, um, maybe maybe we'll bring a camera. Maybe we'll hang out and, and talk whiskeys one day. But we'll we'll see what happens. I don't want to get ahead of myself with the whole COVID thing because yeah. because <laughs> I don't want to plan a trip and have it backfire on me. I, just, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's just jinxing yourself. <laughs> like, yeah. So. Um, Thanks, Josh. We appreciate you stopping in, and we yep. will see you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank time. you. Yep, you Cheers. too. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So that Good was stuff. fantastic. Uh, man, for, I can, I'm surprised they're getting the age on some of the stuff they are. I mean, that's that's like waiting it out to be under half of a barrel. That's balls. <laughs> well, yeah. and that, that, that 44 rye, I mean, the, the age of the bottle that I've got, which is, uh, let's see, what, 23 months? Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't taste like, you know, other young ryes that we've had, you know, no. up north, you can get away with it being really young, uh, and at really high proof, you can get away with it being really young, but that it's not a high proof rye and man, is it, that's just tasty. That's yeah. really tasty. It, the one I have is 17 months. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I, I just think that it, the mesquite would it compared to like Del Bach and Cole Keegan and a couple other ones. It's so subdued, you know, it like, is. it's yeah. just a hint in the background um, of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true. Spencer's right there. Barrel storage doesn't, doesn't do them any service either. Well, just being in Texas doesn't do you any, yeah. <laughs> do you any help it's, in that. It's, yeah. it's really interesting that, you know, I think more people, especially in Texas, it seems like are gravitating towards that whole elevage <laughs> method. Um, because used to you yeah. think, well, two years for a Texas whiskey, that's about as old as you're going to get. You know, they might push a little bit. Now you're seeing Iron Root with four-year and five-year whiskeys, and some of these other guys starting to push, like Ranger Creek, four- and five-year-old whiskeys and taking it even further. And uh, I think it's going to be really interesting and amazing to see just what they're able, creatively what they're able to do to really stretch this out. And uh, that's, that's what yeah. I love, seeing a guy like that come in with, you know, Hey, we're going to use white port. Hey, we're going to do this. Just the creativity you get to see within craft right. whiskey. And that's only, only time I've ever heard of white, white port being used. Yep. Out, out of how, whatever. Only time ever. So uh, I think that is pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, do we want to move on to the hero edition next? Where, where do we want to head? The, to the Taz? To the Taz. The Tatas. If, if yeah, if we're gonna do the Taz, we need to do the hero first. Hero first. Okay. okay. Probably. I, I like how you're you seem concerned about this. So I'm I'm loving it. Well, there's a reason. Have you guys tried them yet? Nope. This no, me. I haven't. First okay. crack at it. First crack. <laughs> Alrighty. So we are look at 
looking at the Hero Edition, which is a single barrel. And I'll let Mike talk more about this lovely distillery for a second. So, all right. So these are, uh, well, Tawakaro. So uh, what I've got, or ta I'm sorry, Tawakaro. Tawakaro, I believe is the correct pronunciation. I'm uh, rubbing so, off on everyone. Dude, <laughs> crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Well, all that's right. So Tawakaro founded in 2016 by Justin and Jason Jackson. And uh, they're in Grapevine, Texas. And uh, it's the second distillery that Jason has worked for. He previously worked for a distillery in Colorado Springs where he was the head distiller. Um, they are a grain to glass distillery. They use locally sourced Texas grains. They mill, mash, ferment, distill, and hand dip each bottle right there at the distillery in Grapevine. Uh, the corn comes from Valley View. The rye comes from Denton. The malt comes from Fort Worth. And the water comes from right there in Grapevine. Um, their name, uh, Tawakero, it's uh, indigenous, meaning a bend in the river, which is the name of the water source uh, that the settlers had there. And one thing which I found really interesting is, as I understand it, they actively use their profits to clean up the local environment. Um, mm -hmm. They have two, two whiskeys, uh, or two, right, well, yes, two whiskeys, a four grain, uh, which is what both of these are that we're going to have, um, and then a, a rye malt. Um, they also have started... Uh, in the last year doing cast strength versions of these and both of the these are single barrel picks uh, of the four grain and I think they've got some other newer ones coming out as well so this one this Tawakaro this is a barrel pick and this was from the uh, from the Kansas City Bourbon and Whiskey Club and they went down to go, to go do a barrel pick and they couldn't decide between two barrels so they said screw it let's just do them both and um, so this first one it has their uh, the good old tater sticker. Um, and this is the, the hero, the hero edition. And the, the, the proceeds from this one went to answering the call, which money goes to first responders in need. And uh, well, the second one, you have to wait till we get to the second one, but this one is from, uh, it was barrel 17 dash zero, zero, zero eight. It is 64.8% ABV cast strength, straight bourbon whiskey. So it is over two years old. Very nice. And I was doing it before. I'm going to do it again here. I'm going to show up. Two years. This one is a typical Texas, very dark. I was gonna say, yeah. and going into the nose right away, you get you I, you get that barrel note kind of popping out of this one a little bit more than some of the obviously yeah. the last ones, Ranger Creek by far. Um, this one is nice brown sugar, but the wood to me is a little. It's not overwhelming, but it is the more powerful dominant note for me on the nose on the first two yeah. drags here. And there's the different that's two barrels that we're going to deal with, but um, yeah, yeah no, it that. is. Uh, go, oh, go ahead. I was say, it's just got that big Texas oak funk right off the top that you it does. normally expect from a Texas whiskey. This is like amplified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's it, it's it's. I just call it like that. That Texas funk to me, it just buttered dust is what it's like. <laughs> but it's just like a. <laughs> but it's just like a really like a I don't know like a weird weird funky uh weird funky corn and then the with mm -hmm. caramel and and i get white pepper on it but it's just white pepper i get honey on the front end before it starts the barrel note starts to wrap over it mm. Ooh, I mean, just... just... go ahead sorry yeah I, I was i was gonna say i get i'm getting some uh like sweet dark fruit in there like some macerated grapes Mm -hmm. I could see that. And that could one, be I mean, that. That could be that fresh note on that front end where I was saying lemon, but I was going to say I can see how it would be. You could get like a grapey edge off of that. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're, I think fairly transparent. They had the the four grain. Uh, they it says, uh, sixty five percent corn, twenty two percent, uh, wheat slash rye, which is eleven percent of each. 13% okay. malts, 6% of its rye malt, 6% six row barley, and 1% Cara Amber barley malt. Okay. Well, 1% seems interesting. Like, that must have a There's got to be a reason for it. A very I mean, unique I, flavor yeah. hit coming out of there to drop 1% in, because I, I mean, I know it makes sense, but it's also like, do we need to buy it? You know, <laughs> yeah. can we get away with one 20 pound sack? Is that, is it going to be okay? I mean, clearly it's making a difference either in, either in volume fill or in flavor. Right. Yeah. But no, this yeah, is a little, 
We'll go ahead. Get a little waxy it. note in there too on this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm jumping into this. I'm gonna keep rolling. Yeah. Please do. Mm. Oh, hey, Bourbon Road. Thanks for stopping in, Jonathan. Always good to see mm. one of the licorices here. The mm. handsome licorice brother. Oh, the handsome. <laughs> We're, we're not starting fights, but we'll start fights. <laughs> Jonathan, did he share any of that 64 Armagnac with you? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> did, did he show you what came with it is a better question. Yeah. <laughs> did he even tell you that he had it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's an even better question. Mm. Okay, let's jump Let's jump flavors on this. So <laughs> it's, it's much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be the new business cards that he's got. <laughs> it just says, yeah, distiller, the handsome one. Like the Wiley Coyote card. Instead of genius, handsome. <laughs> oh, he did. He did share it. He said the 64 oh, is off the charts gold. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Nice. All right. Let's, be, let's get back to the hero edition here. Sorry about that, everyone. Mm, this is. Hmm. Uh... Mm. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Man, there's a flavor punch halfway mm -hmm. through. Like the front half, it is not. And then once you hit halfway, the, you get like punched in the sides of the tongue. Yeah. Um, wow. Does that really come to fruition at that point? Mm. What do you guys yeah, taste intense, on this thing? Intense core of... Uh, of dark fruit sour um man it's got me like puckering on the side of my cheeks mm -hmm. here um <laughs> with almost with cheeks almost like if you took a mix of like strawberry and grape nerds candy and mm -hmm. tossed them in your mouth you get that really su intense sweet um and sour uh, fruit note in there. there there's a little mm -hmm. bit of grape jam going on but a little bit of fig yeah, well. I get that really, that really, really mm -hmm. weird flavor, like a like a grape jam or grape jelly. Yeah, just that really, yeah, that really weird part of it. Yeah, and like you said, I like the. I don't know, man. I'm almost getting date in the back half of this. Um, I can that see that yeah. thick flavor that that usually has. Um, I'm getting a bit of that, and then all of a sudden, like the spices roll up, man. The finish sticks around on this thing. Yeah, it is. It's a strong finish. This is not it's, a bad it's from finish the, for me. It's it's like it goes. It's from the back. It like hangs out right back here, mm -hmm. and just stays here. Yeah, mine's starting on the sides of my tongue, and then like leaving this trail. Like I could but just. See, it, I, could I don't feel get. Where it I, I don't get the hug. I don't get the hug out of it. This always. It's it just stays right in there. It's just hanging doesn't, out. Doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, and there's this. There's this on that last sip I just took. I picked up. There's kind of this green vegetable note that, that just wraps around a little bit of that sweetness, um, adds a little bit of a funkiness to the to the flavor, almost like uh, grilled green peppers or something like that, maybe even mm. poblano pepper kind of note to it. There's this just a, a funky green vegetable note going on there. The poblano pepper, I think, was – that's pretty accurate. That's a good one. That is an excellent I – want, I want to pick that one. That's a very good description of that. It's a little bit. It's got a little earthiness to it as well. Um, but man, this is this is a fun. This is a fun, funky, wild ride. I like this one. Yeah, yeah. Save, 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 save a little bit of, of that terms. one. Yeah. Save this some. Is, so it's grabbing your attention. Some yes. other whiskeys don't. This one is grabbing by the shirt, shaking you around a little bit. Like, hey, flavor here, <laughs> flavor here, flavor here. You know, like it. It's got some shit going on. Grabs you by the haunches. Yeah, well, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So while while that one's fresh, we'll go we'll go to the other one. So the, oh, the okay. second pick that they oh, did. Okay. Keep going. Uh, if you've if you got poured ready, all right. The second one to pick. So the first one is barrel seventeen zero 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 eight, and this one is eighteen zero zero thirty two, and it's sixty three point one percent. So it's a little bit lower in proof points, but don't let that fool you. But this one, the uh, the tater sticker, uh, you know, in honor of, of everybody's hero, Randy Marsh. It's called Tabobunga. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I think that's – that's we should have a show where we just talk to people about tater stickers. Yes. 
yeah. tater stickers in general. Like, show them. <laughs> what did I miss? I didn't. Uh, y'all asked, or uh, Jonathan. You asked Jonathan about the card. Mar- March opened the package. <laughs> So I wondered if that was going to happen, I Jonathan. I, I will tell that. you. I will tell you that's that's a high resolution file. If by chance you wanted, <laughs> I don't know, a, a printed fleece blanket, I think we could make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a different beast. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Completely wow. different nose. Okay, yeah. just between these, just the smells on these two, the distillery is reminding me of Driftless Glen with their picks. How they can, they're good, but they can be really varied. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they, they can they can be a, a wide range of what you're getting, and just on the nose, I feel like you're totally getting that with these two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is almost more apple. Yeah. Yeah. And a little bit of hay. I get hay yeah. in this. Yes. The proof hits different Wet on hay. this one for me. Where, where, the, where the first one goes and comes back here, this one's all up mm-hmm. front, and it just always stays up front. You know what's insane is this is 63.1, and I can shove my nose in the glass and not pull yes. it out. Oh. I mean, it's just yeah. not... I'm That's what I'm saying. Don't one. let the proof points fool you, because, it, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't nose, and it doesn't taste like it's that proof. You can get into a lot of trouble. Mm. So I am getting after the little like a hay note. You get the you get a nice rich molasses, and then I get leather, and then the barrel starts to kick over on me. But sorry, I was I had my nose in there deep. I had to I had to yeah, I had yeah. to pull out. <laughs> I had to pull out and take yeah. a second there. Wow, I don't get that Texas funk coming off of this one quite as hard as the other. No. One. And yeah, mm. yeah, Malcolm's asking. Are these, yeah, these are the same mash bill, just two different single barrel picks. You fibber McGee. <laughs> I don't know if that can be accurate. It is. These are both the four grain <sighs> bourbons. I agree with my prior statement. Like Driftless Glen's good, but different barrel picks. Holy shit, is this different? Yeah. <laughs> like this one, I got much more. Like rye spice, a titch of a titch of the anise, mm-hmm. or black licorice in it, or fennel, whatever, however you want to get to there for what your taste is. They blend together for me. I just like them all in whiskey. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> mm. Bright front end, honey, titch of lemon. Then it turns into like lemon peel or rind. Like it gets a bitter, a bitter edge for a second. And then the then yeah. the barrel rolls in for me. Yeah, it smells like you're making a cocktail to me. When you get in there, just the flavor, it's like, all right, I see you're you're macerating something. You got uh yeah, you got the like you said, the lemon, you got maybe you're doing some muddling and yeah. it's just it's just so yeah, it's so different. I, I thought it was really interesting how they yeah, and they said, Well, we couldn't pick between the two because they were so drastically different, and they are very drastically different. Yeah, yeah. that's I'm in, and this is the thing when we're trying special picks. This is not the normal release. So I was going to say normal releases may have a little bit different flavor profile, especially right. between these two. Man, with that, I couldn't imagine the blending process. Could you try blending these two? I'm glad they didn't, you know, but putting I'm, them together. I'm doing that in the background. <laughs> yes, the white bits, Emily. Yes. When I'll talk to Lemon where it started to, started to turn, it's... It, if my son was eating a lemon, which is weird, and he does, and he gets to the white part, all of a sudden his face changes. And there's a split second where it changes from lemon, lemon like tart to lemon bitter, is the way I would put that. Well, that's to me, is the difference between these two barrels is one of the, the overwhelming flavors was coming in very sweet but very sour on the first one. And this one is very bitter, or it's more bitter and it's more earthy. Um, I get that lemon, that kind of citrus thing going on, but it, it's just like, you know, two forks in the road and they're going extreme opposite directions. Yep. Halfway the black liquor stuff kicks up for me. First of all, I love 
this one this one is okay for me but it is that the black licorice second half or back third of it i still get a little vegetal kick in there too yep i think that's a bit of that hay from the first one i think there's a little mm -hmm. bit in that there too but this one it seems a little more it seems more pronounced um oh are these close we'll more see. cinnamon and baking spice on this one too okay they're pretty close these yeah, they're two, pretty close they're pretty close between each other it's hard to tell on my table every now and then the light shining through yeah. makes one seem brighter and then i come up with yeah. an answer and i'm like oh i was lying i don't want to show anyone and they did, hmm. you know, they did this as a pick, and then the the, the store that helped them make the pick happen uh, carried the leftovers for a while. And I wish I had bought, I only got one of the the hero edition, but I bought two Randys because, I mean, come on, <laughs> you got to have two Randy Marshes. But the, the I wish that I would have gotten two two of the heroes for the label alone, for God's sakes. <laughs> But uh, I just love to hear yeah. other other people caving to that. That's all. I, I bought it because the label was fucking hysterical. Like, <laughs> yeah, I forgot I mean, who had one, and it was Star Wars, and it was named Chewy, and the whiskey was extremely chewy. I'm like, okay, this is fuck. That's fucking funny. I'm like, I, I want a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, th oh, Mark. Mark was not a fan of the two he ch two he tried from this. Um. I Which, what, two, what two did you have? Because these are the only two I've had. I have not had the standard releases of these, but I, I, I want yeah. to. Yeah, we, we'd be intrigued. Mark, what two did you end up having? Because I'll say I I I like the Hero Edition. Um, I probably wouldn't get the Tawabunga one. But my flavor profile, not theirs. So. Yeah, yeah. I would, and I, I would clearly say if you're coming in from the approach of all you've had is like Kentucky or Indiana type whiskeys. You've never had a Texas whiskey. Um, man, these these are hitting from a whole different uh, area of the ballpark, so to speak. They're just, uh, they're really different. Um, but hmm. I think that's what, to me, that's what's, this is what I freaking love about Texas whiskey is you've got all these different distilleries located in all these different places of the state. A lot of them have this same characteristic vein of Texas funk to whatever degree that flows through them all. But the, at the same time, they can all be so unique and different. Right. Just as we've seen just from this one distillery, two different barrels of the same mash, and they're so radically different from each other. Wow. But, but yeah, this is, I mean, I could see where this could be challenging for somebody who's used to maybe a standard type bourbon or something like that. Um, it, not your everyday kind of. But if you love challenging flavors, you love something funky and weird, man, this this could be right up your ballpark. I mean, just yeah, because it. I'd say I I like funky and weird. Those are both. Yeah. I would I would I would claim the first hero was funky, <laughs> weird for the other one. Like it's not yeah. it's not mm -hmm. bad. It's not my alley, and I I probably right. would have pegged that more as a rye. When everyone here is talking, they liked it in the chat that the they like the rye a little bit better than they do the bourbons. I might have pegged the Tawabunga as a rye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is what I would have thought. Um <clears throat> but it's it's a lot easier drinking the the Tawabunga is. Oh. Which which is to a fault. <laughs> I don't know. No, you got now I gotta go back, damn it. I don't know if I have enough glasses for this. I don't know if I have I enough think, glasses. Uh, you should go back six or seven times. Um just hey, so heads up, we're, I'm working we're on my hour. blend. All four are in here right now. So, oh, you mean this lovely thing? Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is darker though. Yeah, I'm I'm doing it too. Yeah. Okay, I am going back to the hero. No, it, it's it's funky wood molasses, and that one for me, I would I would get this one above the other one. I don't I don't think this one is is as challenging as the other. I guess the wood might be the thing that that gets people, but I think that's what's cool about it. It always does. <laughs> I'm starting to get the uh, the Hero Edition. Wait, no, 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 Tawabunga. That's the second one we did, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm starting to get a little bit of a um, like a cedary cedar pine sap kind of note coming off of it on the finish for me. It's hanging around in there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to decide if I like it or not. I just did the hero, and now I'm getting like a little sugary, sappy note, but I wouldn't call it pine. I, mm. I tell you, I, I I did do I did not do it with the hero edition, but with uh, Talabunga, I did make a Manhattan with it. I was very pleased. 
Mm. Mm, okay. I can see these being excellent in an old fashioned or a Manhattan. See, and that's a, that brings me to a problem and a major dilemma that I have with a single barrel pick that you get. Uh, you, you're going to run out. <laughs> and so you can only make so many Manhattans. And uh, right. so it's kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a problem. Um, so uh, yeah, do it sparingly, but you know, you always wish, oh yeah, I'll buy one and, and then hurry up and run back and go buy three or four more because you like it that much. Yeah. Um, it's Bourbon Row was saying he had to make up his own Texas line up to drink a long time. That's fair. We had eight other whiskeys we yes. could have done tonight, and I said that we should not do 16 reviews in one night. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> were going. Well, no, was game. pushing hard for all of them. Oh, they were. They, 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 they wanted to see the wheels come off at the end where I just say, this is from Balcones. This is the release. Oh, <laughs> we should, <laughs> we should have all, done all, all 16 with a turkey dinner. <laughs> I mean, we still got we've got we've got iron root whiskeys. We've got real spirits. Yeah. We've got. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we'll ha we have enough to have a whole other two streams. Yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll have more nights. And, and Jonathan likes the cedar note. Um, and and you know what? I've had a couple of those where where it is kind of nice. Where um, where it's not too sappy. Where that cedar note's like I feel like it's a fresher wood when you when you hit that than some of the oak. Um, it's just interesting but yeah yeah i get i get well i get some in some bourbons especially i get like a cedar shaving or like a you know a dried cedar board kind of note and i, mm -hmm. I like that this to me is more green I, it almost has me thinking pine salt kind of thing uh. or a pine rosin uh turpentine kind of note to it and normally that might be off-putting to me but in the framed within the frame within the framework of what these whiskeys are I think I like it. It's kind of a funky, weird thing going on, and it's just like, yeah, I'm cool with this. So, <laughs> okay, okay, Spencer, Spencer, we we will move on to boozing some more. <laughs> all right, we we will get moving. And so the next one we're gonna talk about, and I'll have to pour out here. Let's uh, let's talk about the Andalusia Striker Single Malt Cask Strength Single Barrel Edition. And Ben, what can you tell us about this lovely place? Okay, so Andalusia, there in uh, Blanco, Texas, kind of in that, that region where you're getting a lot of these distilleries coming out of, um, started by Ty Phelps and Tommy Irwin. They were working together at uh, Real Ale Brewing, um, making beer, and decided, hey, let's do, do whiskey. Um, and they, he's focused mainly on, a, uh, on American single malt styles of whiskey. And uh, they're situated in a in a working ranch, so you got livestock all around. And they're doing. Uh, I think what's really cool is water being a big res resource there in Texas. Uh, they've got a big uh, rainwater collection vat, so they're collecting and reusing the rainwater there. And uh, yeah, they're a zero waste facility. Uh, so a lot of cool things going on there, but their their whiskeys are just phenomenal. These these single malts are are really amazing, and the striker is they're smoking the malt similar to how you know you would in Scotland, except without peat. They're using a blend of mm. oak, mesquite, and applewood. So basically, kind of mm. the the Texas barbecue tradition uh, put into a put into a whiskey. And so this particular bottle that you guys got samples from, you can see how incredibly dark this stuff is. Mm -hmm. uh, our buddy Tim Adams was out there at the distillery oh. and got to hand bottle this one himself from the barrel, which he literally had to tip up to drain the dregs out of to get this bottle. Oh, so that's you're looking the at the dregs of the barrel <laughs> right there. So so, so are there little little pieces in the bottom of that one that have I, come it's to so, fruition? It's so dark, I can't tell. But as best <laughs> I can see in the light, yeah, there's God, some, I hope so. There's some uh, black yeah. chunks floating around in there. It this is, one's she's, coming in at 124 or 129.42. She's a nice color. She is a deep, rich, almost a tint of red in it. Or you might yep. think it was it was finished. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Yeah. The, all that wood is crazy on the nose. I don't know if it's been <laughs> I had. No, I, I, some of these I haven't had before, so, and I've been just, like, letting them sit to, like, overwhelm me. And 
This is freaking wow. You Texas can s- barbecue in a glass, baby. And you can you can literally smell the mesquite, the applewood. What was the other one you said in there? I don't know if I caught that caught that one. But uh, those oak. oak. Yeah. A little bit, but man, those other two are strong. Like a toasted apple on the nose. Yeah. Cinnamon. It's got like a nice, darker, rich uh, stone fruit note. Second half. Oh, this smells rich. It is. So, not to <sighs> offend anybody, <laughs> but, you know, I don't care. But like we do every but week. So, <laughs> so, like the difference from... <laughs> I lack shit giving. <laughs> so, but whereas, whereas Brimstone is like, you owe me money. I'm going to shove your face in this poker until you pay me back. And you're going to do where it's just like this offensive. I'm going to hurt you. And you're, you know, there's nothing you're going to do about it. You know, the Emily chambers of whiskey, but this, <laughs> this, is, this is more where you're just like, Oh man, this is a, this is a great smokehouse. I mean, you know, this it's, yeah. it's very nice. It's de- it's de- it, You could tell that it's been there for a while. There's been a lot of, a lot of cooking, a lot of activity. You could smell all the, you know, the, the, the years of smoke and you could smell the woods and everything in there. It's very, it's very nice and layered and rich. Now that you, now that you mention it, like as soon as you were talking about, I had my nose in the glass and I was walking into the salt, lake, uh, just, just south of, uh, wizard Academy and stuff. Yep. I was getting that like just full on, like you said, like enveloping light smoke note that's been hanging around for years. This is man. Oh shit. This is a different beast. Cause I'm just gonna say it right now. So what else are you guys getting on the nose? I'm gonna dive in and take a taste. Oh, take a taste, man. Yeah. Just send me home, baby. <laughs> this one's I'm done. Wow. Hmm. Whoa. <laughs> Does it pick up the gear like second way through? I'm not like saying this is powerful because of the alcohol by volume, but the flavors pick up. It's like someone was just going like, say you're in a, in a, in a fancy race car and someone's going 60. Then all of a sudden they slammed the thing down and started shifting gears and it takes off on you. Holy wow. Okay, but this is this is the difference though. This is it's not just a race car. This is when you hit a really well tuned, big fat American V eight race car or a nice mm. Italian V twelve. And you just get to hear everything working in harmony. And it's just it's deep and it's throaty. And it is again, brimstone, you either like it or you do not like this is, it. This isn't this brimstone. is not no 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 striker. But, oh, okay. But this is but but this is you have to like this. I mean, this is respect. This is like I, I like this. This is my on, first time having this. This is fantastic. To me, it's like, like brimstone put on a suit and tie, basically. It's it's more refined and rounded in some way, in a lot of ways. And, <laughs> and quit dragging its knuckles on the ground when it won't. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and how much of that is you know brimstone is a corn whiskey, and this is uh, this is a malt. Yeah. So. Mm. But it's it's just gorgeous, and yeah, yeah. I saw somebody say brisket in a glass, and yeah, that's that's a great definition of what this is. And there's this really cool. I don't know if you guys are getting this mm. on the back curve of it, as as the uh, as bad as you're putting it, it's all the spice, everything kind of revving up. There's this cool mint that comes over the top of it. That's just <sighs> it's almost like a mint that I would think like you know sometimes like a lamb or mutton you would use mint, and that's just like like. Like a mm-hmm. barbecued lamb with mint that's got this nice thick smoke to it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And almost now that I mentioned it, it's got a meatiness in here. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whoo! This, yeah, is... this is like burnt ends on a brisket, baby. Oh, man, this is one you could you can hang out with on a Friday night if you're gonna sit down and have this. I can see this entertaining a couple of drinks in an hour of your time, where I might not want to be interrupted. Yep. Is the, is the way I'm looking at this. This is a nice ride. Mm, that's nice. Okay, hold on. Mm. And on this one, where you're getting that mint, I get like a little bit of cream and just 
and then this is hinted in the background so i'm not it's very small a very little bit of like a rubbing the alcohol comes up okay I'm like rubbing alcohol but the alcohol takes hold for like a millisecond and it, it also i'm getting it reminds me of like if i'm preparing a beef rub or a meat rub of some kind and you know, a lot of times i'll use some brown sugar and you get a little bit of dried habanero in there so you get the habanero heat and the brown sugar <laughs> I just saw that. Oh my God. You just say you're a little late on that one. I didn't post it because I couldn't. Yeah. It can be done. <laughs> but you know what? As often as you say, the... man, I'd love to see this at a higher proof. Can you, I'd I like don't... to taste this at a lower proof. Yeah. Water it down. I could, I well, could see that happening. What that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> mm. now, now, Nathan, I was one of the original six that started that, so you can blame that shit on me. Um <laughs> <laughs> and Emily Chambers asked if we would yep. like a cigar with that, and absolutely, I yes. have. And yes. the the smoke, for me, a lot of times on a smoky whiskey, the smoke from the cigar kind of bounces that out, so then you're tasting more of the malt and the, the other fruit notes that come in, um, just depending on how you want to pair that up with what kind of cigar. But, yeah, it, it goes great with a good cigar. So, And now that I've had a few and I'm coming back, I'm getting a nice cherry note hidden in, in the middle of this. Not not marrow, not maraschino cherry, but like a bean some, cherry. Yep. Halfway through, that's that's a really nice kind of kind of other flavor. It's almost that that note mm. is similar to Maker's Mark, but it's hidden amongst all this other shit around it that is muffling it. I had a cherry glazed you know, ribeye one time, and that's what it there. It's reminding me of that note from that hmm. see i would i would almost say a, a pipe more than a than a cigar pipe yes yes i, I used to get I when, when i when that. i smoked a lot of pipe i used to get a lot of this this one blend called texas mud and it was just thick oh my god it was just so <laughs> thick but i could i could i could picture having that with this on the finish like you said i'm mm -hmm. getting mint spearmint barrel you yeah. know like it's poof and it's back into that damn I knew I was gonna like this one, but this is um, there's there's so much going on that you gotta you gotta sit down with this one for a while. It's a fit. Some people might just have a drink. I say sit down 15, 20 minutes with this. No, one. this I'm not normally like that, yeah. but take your time with this one. It, it holds this is up one with my, water. Yeah, I was gonna say this is one of my Friday or Saturday night whiskeys. I'm ready to sit down and chill for a while and uh, just totally lose myself in it. I this would mourn the loss of this bottle. I will. <laughs> just don't have any Promethean accidents. That's all, and we'll be just fine. <laughs> yeah. But I'm I I that one. It was weird because I think um, the other one from Tawakaro was. I think the oak and some of the flavors were almost stronger than this. And some of the mm -hmm. some of the barrel, but I think this was just a richer, dense, higher level of flavor is what I was getting out of this one. Um, but that, I think that's good, and everyone was mentioning it. So let's transition in to the last one of the night. We're only going to go over the stream by a little bit. We did pretty good this evening, but let's switch over to some balcones. Um, now, Should we do one in honor of Ed? Balconies! <laughs> Balconies! And, and that in and of itself is it is an homage to Josh Galladay, who yes, who is who I found out about this lovely whiskey from. He when I first met Josh, he was the Balconis poster poster boy. Like they didn't they didn't pay him. But he could have been easily that guy, like, and and they found they found a great job at Iron. But I was he was big on it, so I was more than happy to try this one. I have heard everyone talk good things about it, but at the same time, say it's gonna wreck your palate. Um, have you never had, had this? Probably, I stayed away from it. Are I you just, a brimstone oh, virgin? Yeah, dear right God! Oh it my is. gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Wow, you're you're, 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 you're like the, you're like the guy going into the marital marital aid store and buying the number twelve home wrecker on his first trip. I hey, well done it. <laughs> well, no, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, before we go, uh, Bourbon Road wants to know what mic are you using, Ben? Just an it's answer, a, ben. a blue snowball. So I don't know if there's problems with it or or what. No, it's, it's all good. Just oh. just just making sure people get the right answers yeah. as we're going yeah. here. Um, so Balcones Distillery, Waco, Texas, um, started. Um, it was <laughs> founded in an old welding shop, which I find awesome. Knocked down some walls, moved some stuff in. <laughs> um, so they they bought the building, rehabbed it in 2008, 2009. They finally started distilling some of their own stuff. Um, so really interesting. Current distiller is Jared Hempstead. We know him quite a bit. They are creating great whiskey. Let's just be honest. In my mind, mm -hmm. I know everyone may put the star on Garrison Brothers for punching out um, all of the the Texas stuff going to the to the world and getting the name out there. A little bit, I think Balcones did a little bit more with that by producing a much wider variety lineup um so I, I lean towards them as being the one that really kicked down some of the some of the other doors in, in my mind so that, that's just me nathan what are you noping you just all upset because i said waco wrong is that it no i thought i said do i have to you say mentioned, wacko? you mentioned you mentioned the big star the big star oh well whatever <laughs> we know how i feel about them um <laughs> That's all. Uh, so uh, interesting stuff. Brimstone uses the same spirit as their blue roasted corn. Um, and then it, it was smoked with Texas scrub oak, a denser oak, um, supposedly giving a little bit more life. I don't want to speak to that. I haven't had it. Um, we can go in depth, but Jared's going to come on the show again mm -hmm. in a little bit as well, too. So I don't want to steal too much information from him and, and waste, waste two streams. Um, so let's roll over to the bell, the brimstone here. Mm -hmm. The one I have is fifty three percent alcohol. I just want to. I just want to watch. I just want to take this in okay. as you try it, Pat. Okay, yeah. first <laughs> let's get this yeah. up here. Another another I, beautifully dark whiskey. This because I only have I have two. Well, just I'll say three comments left. about yeah. about about Balcona's brimstone, and I will wait until after you do your notes. Okay. Yeah. Oh my, you know how we said the last one was a Texas bar? Bullshit, this is Texas barbecue. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like my nose in this glass. This is being right out next to a pit, seeing the like 10 hours later, seeing a nice, like the crisp burnt ends. I'm guessing AJ, you can you can oh. chime in here, but didn't uh, Balconis do a like a sherry finished or, or a, no, it was a rumble finished? Balcones or something like that. They did some kind of special finishing with it. Yeah, they recently. did a finished one. Oh man! And I, just on the nose, I don't know why everyone said this was choking people out. This does not smell well, like a choke you out whiskey. Nah, just like, wait. Okay, but I'm just. This is this is so pleasant, man. And this is one that I'm getting such a nice, rich like meat smell on this and i do not tip it i mean i don't always get meat in my whiskey really really bad bourbon roads right texas beef jerky a little more smoke but i get what you mean like that ha it has that nice consistency to the, to the flavor and the, the smell i'm getting in here okay you guys can talk about it. i'm gonna sip the smoke all right yeah i get a little bit of even soy or teriyaki coming off mm -hmm. of the I I think I think uh, oh. I think I think Brimstone has. What I think it's got a little this is mild. Glorious. What did you say? Mike? I think I think Brimstone is a little mild. Or it's milder compared to what it was in in previous bottles that I've had. Ah, okay, that I can easily believe. But this is not this ass kicker. I was I like part of me was afraid. I was, I was, I was like, I thought like I was going to like choke on part of the smoke in my glass. That is not happening at all right now. This isn't, this is lovely. But then again, I like smoky scotches, smoky whiskey. I kind of well, lean down yeah. this way. Think about this too. We've worked our way up and you had, you had yes. bold whiskeys and smoky whiskeys prior to this. That's true. That is very true. Usually yeah. I get I get a big ethanol hit right off this off the top typically, um, but as we progress through these other whiskeys, it's not as prominent there that, no. that I usually yeah. get. But I'd I'd say it's medium to low. 
Yeah. And then you start getting the wood. God, the spices are just really neat in here. Yeah, there's some nice, great pepper spice yes. going on. Some habanero, maybe even a little ghost pepper kicking in there. Um, God, it's it's lovely. Oh, but this it, is. Go ahead. Sorry I, about that. I was gonna say, I, it, what's fun? What's funky on the note? There, there's a funky note in here that to me always reminds me of diesel fumes. Mm -hmm. In a, in a weird little way. But yeah, it reminds, yeah, it reminds yeah, it reminds me a little bit of kerosene. Yeah. In a good I can way. Get that. Mm. Yeah, I, I do. So, I do get a little bit edge of that kerosene. It's, it's almost like a little waxiness to it for a second. And I, I think you need to go back and revisit this when you haven't been working away up with a lot of yeah. cast strength stuff. Number one, That's but true. one of one of my favorite things about brimstone is if you just have it, it, and, and I've said this multiple times uh, over and over again. I think it gets in your skin and you, the next day you taste it <laughs> and you, you'll sit there like you get up in the morning and you go, Oh, brimstone. <laughs> and it just, it just hangs in there with you, but you either like it or you do not like it. I don't think there's a middle of the road with it. Yeah. Like you've had that cigar that just sticks with you the next day and it's just <laughs> sitting in your mouth, it, yeah. good or bad. It's just got right. this like hang on you. Yeah. Um, the one that says, the one that says, uh, mm. where'd that cat go? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the one that shit in my mouth last night. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's neat. It's like honey and then like dark molasses mm -hmm. mixed with the honey. Mm -hmm. And then, then it really does start getting into those, that nice smoke note. Dude, the applewood, I think was a fantastic choice in this. Um, just because I think that added this nice complexity with this mm. mesquite just in the smoking is fantastic. Mm. Damn, that is that is pretty pretty exciting. I like this one. Mm. Yeah, you, I will share this for the uh, for the listeners and the watchers out there. Um, I do a lot of I do a lot of cooking. I do I use a lot of whiskeys in making sauces and things like that. Brimstone is my hands down favorite whiskey to cook with, especially making barbecue sauces and reductions and things like that. It's yeah. the smoke quality carries over, translates into the sauce, and it's just freaking fantastic. Um, yes. I also love using take a little dropper, and if you got a whiskey or a bourbon that's a little bit boring, add a few drops of uh, brimstone to it, and yes. that will liven it up pretty nicely. So. Mm. Uh oh, Pat, you're muted. Sorry about that. I was pouring before. The first minute or first second, second and a half, I get like this neat floral note, and then the barbecue rolls over. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Texas Lee, that is exactly right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to look up there. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the flower and I cannot peg it. Hmm. Camellia or jasmine? First one. Jasmine Camellia. would be a little bit brighter for me. And I think this is a little Camellia bit. Camellia, maybe? Yep. It's got that sweetness to it. Nice, nice. Oh, Jonathan, can we make you give stuff <laughs> to Josh <laughs> to get to us too? Can we do that? <laughs> Yeah, I've got I got three he, bottles sitting at that distillery waiting for me to get my ass down there. And, and, <laughs> Josh, down there. and Josh has got my uh, evolution barrel releases hanging out down there that I have to pick up up sometime too. Oh, geez, Spencer, what will we ever do? God damn it! <laughs> but uh, mm. Mm. don't forget to add that that uh, brimstone to your blend. I will. I will. I will. And on this, I'm getting like, I get a spearmint on the side of my tongues as well, too, from this brimstone. But once, you know, it's not what I had right away. It's number eight on the evening, so that could be something separate. Um, I'm pretty surprised by that. I'm going to come back to that one, like you guys said, tomorrow just to see what happens. Because right now, I can just sit in it. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. It's not scary. It, it feels like home to me. But does this big fat glass yeah. of Texas whiskey feel like home to me that's the question that. oh we'll get to that we oh you mm. typed that mike we'll, we'll get to uh jonathan and robert's uh and corn 
coming up. That's sitting here in the in the pile of stuff to do. Oh, this is a weird note for me. It turned musty. Are you guys getting like a musty smell out of this? Like a wine cellar almost? Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Maybe a little. Fine. There, Nathan. Ooh. Okay. I'm not a fan of the blood. <laughs> Whoa. What'd you do? Oh. Shoot it? I, I, he, Nathan challenged me to go bulb deep, so I I did. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he gave you 20 bucks. <sighs> oh. I take Apple iPay too, so we'll we'll figure out something. I got oh. way more black licorice stuff out of the mix of all of them that assaulted my senses, and I was not a fan. I did. I got more <laughs> black licorice and musty, <sighs> but I don't. Yeah. I don't dis. I don't dislike that. Nope. You that is the, crazy. It is this black licorice, like boom, right yeah. on top. Like way more powerful than any of them had together. Like this was like the kryptonite yeah. of Pat mixture. <laughs> ah, I give credit to everyone for their own whiskey. This combination was not good, and I do not, not normally make that. Make go yourself, ahead, make baby. that a meme. Yeah. I want to see that. Hey, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. you, you guys speak up for yourselves. I'm speaking up for the the two percent that hate. That fucking and and the, the 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 blend of it does not have the nose of black licorice. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's no, a very that... nice malty nose. <sighs> you're mm. full of shit, you two. It's like you know experiment and black you're licorice. You're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. Mm. All right, go on with your tasting notes. I'm taking a two minute break. Yeah. I'm getting porn. I'm going back to the brimstone. We're just drinking that straight. You know, I was expecting the striker and the brimstone to just totally take this over, but it it didn't. And uh, you you uh -uh. know maybe I don't know if it's the percentages that I'm adding in here, but yeah, the the black licorice is very forward in it. But I'm getting little hints of some red berry, red fruit going on in there, <laughs> and the the finish is just smoked leather, and ah. Oh. I'm loving it. Go go back in for another another sip. Don't don't throat the whole thing. I can't. I already downed it. I'm not making oh. it. I'm not down. Oh, see, that's I did not mean to, but that's just the way life happens. The, the licorice the licorice <laughs> goes away as as you drink it, and it for you. Yeah, it, yeah, for you. No, and it does. Did it did it go away for you? You Ben? Night Bourbon Road. Have a good rest of the evening. Night. Mmm. I went back to the brimstone, brimstone, and this is more. This is my home more than the other one. I'm sorry, brim, 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 brim. brimstone. This is my brim, home. Brim. The Fred Flintstone whiskey, good. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's home for me. I, I, I would rather see just yeah. the brims. I, I was. I'll be honest. I think what you guys said was 100% right. It said it didn't smell like black licorice, but boy, did it slap you mm. with it. And that freaked me out for a second. So. <laughs> I like that blend. Hmm. I do too. I think it's pretty good. You yes, guys got I a do. winner for the night out of these? Well, I got, question. I got my two statements. I'll go. Uh, Balconis, I, at this moment, I could see me drinking it more frequently just across the board mm -hmm. i see the striker as being something interesting on friday night i think you, i think that it it had a little bit more bolder complex flavors to it and i think it would take a little bit more to to break down the density so i i, I think those two are, are close to the top for me and i'm going to be honest i think i found the rain both ranger creeks um incredibly drinkable you know mm -hmm. like i i found i think those two would be the more universal releases 
um, between all of these, I think if you were showing anyone them, I think I might start with them to try to get them moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. This is what I would do. Mike, what are you thinking? Uh, so the, the problem with it, I, I really like that Andalusia. The problem with it is being that it basically was a single one off. Um, it's it's almost it, it's almost mythical. You're not going to get it again. Uh, but it was but it was great, and I, and I really did enjoy that. Uh, I really enjoyed the the Ranger Creeks, which you know I've had the I've had the Rimfire before. I waited until tonight to have the the, the 44. Um, I thought they're very very nice whiskeys. I mean, just mm -hmm. easily everyday, easily adaptable, easily something that you could drink all the time. Um, you know, but we we had three. Three of the whiskeys that we had were uh, were single barrel picks, <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know it's kind of hard to judge those against others. Uh, the brimstone, um, yeah, brimstone all by itself is a different experience. Uh, mm -hmm. the brimstone building up with other stuff is is different. Brimstone while you're smoking meat is an entirely different experience. Uh, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say you know with with it with an asterisk. Um, the, uh, the the Andalusia. Okay. Mark said, I, don't, I missed something, but all, all I saw was this this for a second. And I was like, it made me giggle my ass off. No Robitussin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to chat for a second, and I saw that pop up, and that is fantastic. Um, well, what about Diamond no. Tap? <laughs> that is very, very true. Uh, ben, what was yours? Let's let's hear yours. Um, what did you like? Man, what stood honestly, out for you? honestly, I really I really like them all. I'm I'm a huge fan of the 44 Rye from uh, Ranger Creek. Really love that one, and uh, it's just so freaking good. I just love drinking that whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, the two from Tawakaro were just incredible funky rides, and I love a funky adventure on a whiskey. I love being taken somewhere that. I kind of haven't gone before and and those were uh really good in that way uh that striker you know i'm kind of with you mike that that striker is just so unbelievably good and it is it's like a unicorn bottle and you know you're never going to experience it quite on that level again um if i if i laid all these out and i were just if i were just picking if i could just have one bottle that's it you taking these away you get to pick and keep and have one god i'm, I'm probably taking the striker but that uh, hero edition of the Tawakaro, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the just the weird wild ride that was. Um, yeah. So that would be like maybe uh, an, uh, I don't know, a one and a one A. Yeah. But if I were just having an everyday everyday drinker, that forty four rye is is my everyday bottle. Yeah, out of these. yeah. I was gonna say like the 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 hero edition was like the tangent whiskey where it was like yeah, the, this is the funky Texas rye that you, that you've come to expect you know from a lot of places you know like just just that neat punch so fucking sweet yeah sweet sweet and I'll have and, and the blend oh go ahead sorry mike oh and the blend mm -mm. no yes <laughs> we'll we'll leave our discussion at that you guys all saw that discussion um <laughs> <laughs> but we want to wish everyone out there a happy Thanksgiving. I mean, yes. we, we I don't we don't think we'll be back before then. I mean, if we get a, a you know wild hair up our ass, maybe we'll do a stream before then. But it doesn't look like that. So we want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, a nice safe holiday. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for stopping in to, tonight. We really really appreciate it. We always have a nice time reviewing interesting stuff, and we were just behind. I, it was my fault. We were behind on doing reviews. So we need to knock out six or eight in a row. We might do it again because we need to play catch up for whiskey of the year. And that shit's coming out soon. So we're going to we're just trying to play catch up to give everyone their proper due. Um, but remember, everyone out there, it is not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of whiskey, everyone out there. Have a good Thanksgiving. Cheers. Cheers. Listen, I'll prove it. The stars at night are big and bright. Big in the heart of Texas. Let's get into it. One, two, three.
Oh, 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 oh,